it's 2025 and you're still not using auto layout in your designs, big mistake, big, huge. Don't worry, I'm here to help. Let's jump in. So an auto layout is just a frame that tells the elements inside of it how they should act. Let's see what that means. I have four frames here and each of them has just a letter inside of them. I'll select all of them and put them in an auto layout. Now I can do that by clicking on this button here, use auto layout, or just use the keyboard shortcut shift A. Now once they're in an auto layout, you'll get this brand new kind of set of options in the design panel. So let's look at that. The first thing you'll see is the layout of the auto layout, and that's telling the elements inside which direction they're going in. Right now it's set to horizontal, and that means, let's say I'll select one element and duplicate it, so add something new in, you'll see that it will keep going in that way. So it will keep going in that kind of towards the right. And that also means that if I select an element inside the auto layout and use the right and left arrows, I can move it horizontally within the auto layout and it will swap places with the other elements inside. If I change this to a vertical auto layout, the same thing will happen just going up and down. So I'll duplicate this B and you can see kind of moving it with the up and down arrows and it keeps going down. And the same thing is true if I add a new element. So let's say I'll just add in a circle and I'll drop it inside of the auto layout. You see it just kind of goes in that direction. I can't put it next to any of them. I can't put it like here, right? It just has to keep going up or down. The third layout that we have is wrap. What you need to remember about wrap is that it's a horizontal layout until it has no more space to be horizontal. So if I select wrap right now, nothing's actually gonna happen. It's not gonna look any different. But once I make this auto layout less wide, you'll see that suddenly the D kind of drops down because it has no more space to be in there. You see, the C drops down now. Now both of these drop down, yeah? And you might notice, well, there is quite a lot of empty space here, but the auto layout knows that it's not enough space to have one of these elements inside, so it just drops it down to the row beneath. The next property is the gap. So that is the gap between the elements of the auto layout. And because there is one rule in an auto layout, they all have to be the same. So right now, mine is set to nine. That's just because that's how they were before I put them in an auto layout. But you see, I can make it bigger, I can make it smaller, I can even make it a negative number, so they sort of stack on top of each other, and they all have to follow the same gap. If I hover over them, I can also control this in the canvas, so they'll be the so the gap will be in pink, and I could just drag this to make it bigger or smaller. The next property is the padding. The padding is the space between the elements and the auto layout that they are in. I'm gonna give my auto layout a background color because it makes it easier to see. So I'll add a fill, I'll just choose maybe like this kind of aqua color. And right now you can see if I zoom in that the elements are, they're really stuck to the kind of the border of the auto layout. But if I give them some padding and this controls the horizontal on both sides, you'll see that now the A and the D have space between them and the auto layout itself. I can also set vertical padding, so for the top and bottom at the same time. And that will create a bit of a gap between the top and the bottom of the elements and the auto layout itself. Now, I can also choose individual padding. So if I click on this button, I can change it. So let's say the left is 10, then the right is five, the top is zero, and the bottom is 20. Yeah, so they don't have to all be the same. One little quick trick for you, if I hold down command on my keyboard and then click into either one of these input fields, I will then be able to change the padding for all of them at once. So let's say I type in just one number, let's say 15, you'll see that now all of the sides are 15. But what I can also do, hold down command and click in, I can then use those commas to just type in the individual padding and it will go clockwise, so top, right, bottom, left. So let's say I'll do zero, one, two, and three. So now you see that the individuals are top, zero, right, one, bottom, two, left, three. Pretty cool, right? I've changed my paddings down to zero to show you the last property of the auto layout and that is the alignment. Now you will only really notice the alignment if the auto layout is bigger than the elements inside of it. So I'm just gonna grab it from the corner here and just make it a bit bigger. And you'll see that all the elements sort of are stuck to the left and have moved down a bit. They're kind of in the center. And that's because that's what their alignment is set to. I can change it to top right, for example, or bottom right, center, center, yeah. So you can just move them around inside of the auto layout. But again, it does need to be bigger than them for you to be able to see this. Now let me show you a few more advanced tricks that you can do just using these properties. So the first off is with the gap. Up till now we saw how to just like change the gap manually, so we set what it is. But we can also let the auto layout do that for us. 
From this drop down, I can select auto. And then now you see if I hover over the pink lines, they just say auto. And what that means is the auto layout will just decide what is the spacing to keep them equal. So if I make my auto layout bigger, you'll see that it will space them more. If I make it smaller, it will space them less. Yeah, so it's almost saying, I'm just gonna spread them out as much as I can and keep those gaps even. And that will still work if I add another element inside, it won't grow the auto layout, but it will space them differently. Yeah, does that make sense? There are a few different ways to get this automatic gap. You can just use the drop down to select automatic. You can also just type into here. You can type the full word or just tap in A and it will do that. But you can also double click on the padding. So if I have the padding selected and I just double click, it changes it between automatic and the one where you manually do it. And also if I select the padding and click on X on my keyboard, that also changes it. So yeah, so yeah there's so many different ways to get to this automatic spacing. Now, another cool thing that you can do, if I do have them in negative spacing, you see right now the way that they're stacked is that the D on top and then C is underneath. So like the last element is on top. But if I wanna change that, I just need to select these auto layout settings here to get to like the advanced settings and I can change it. So instead of last on top, it's first on top. And now the A is first. I hope you're already feeling a lot more comfortable with auto layout, but there's a lot more to learn. So we just saw how to add auto layout to elements that are already there, but let's see how an auto layout can even be powerful when there's only one element inside of it. Let's say I have this bit of text here, it's a label, it's probably gonna become a button. So I can put it in a frame and give it background color and all of that, but it won't be dynamic. If the text changes inside, the frame won't grow and shrink to accommodate. So what I can do is put it into an auto layout. I select my text box, shift and A, then I'll give it a background color just so we can see it. And like I said before, an auto layout is just a frame with the auto layout property on top of it. So anything a frame can do, this one can do as well. So I can maybe give it some rounded corners. I can give it a stroke. Yeah, any properties that I want can have effects or anything like that. I'm gonna change the padding a bit, maybe make it five. Lovely. Now, as we said, this is super dynamic. So now if I have text inside of it, right now it says label, but let's say it will say, exit you see how that changed if it just says one letter in it maybe it's just a zero i don't know so that will be super super dynamic so you see how auto layouts are amazing both for multiple elements but also just for a single element inside now all the stuff we saw up till now i think is pretty simple and you can see how easy it can be to use this is where auto layout can become a tiny bit more complicated so for this i just want you to put your concentration hats on and just watch for a minute and trust the process. So when you have elements inside of an auto layout, and even more if you have auto layouts inside of auto layouts, you really need to think about what kind of resizing modes you are giving them. So let's see what that actually means. So I have an auto layout here, this black box that you can see, and inside of it, I have four more auto layouts. Yeah, so I might call this one the big auto layout, and then these are the auto layouts inside of it. So you can see it in the layers panel as well. I've got the auto layout container and then other auto layouts inside of it. Each one of these auto layouts inside of it has some text. Yeah, and that's it. And they each kind of have some padding as well. So let's start to see the different resizing modes. I'm gonna start off with this pink one. And this one is going to be set to hug content, which is usually the default one when you add an auto layout. So in the design panel, you can see that I have these drop downs next to the width and height. You can also see that it says the width and then next to it, it says hug for both of them. You'll also notice that the width and height are grayed out, meaning that I'm not really controlling them. Figma is controlling them for me. Figma is saying, oh, I, I see that there's an auto layout here. I'm going to look at everything that's inside of the auto layout and hug it and just squish onto it. So that's kind of what we saw before with that label. You'll see that again, if I delete, let's say the word content, you'll see that it will shrink to accommodate. The reason that it's not completely just like hugging the text is because of the padding. But if I remove the padding, you'll see that it just kind of like shrinks up to the text and gives it no space to breathe, but we don't want that. So let's bring back the padding. So that's hug. Hug only looks at what's inside of it and just shrinks to it. Let's look at a combination of fixed and fill for the next one. So in the width, I'm gonna select fixed width. And now you see the difference straight away, right? This is black, this is gray. What happens with fixed is that Figma is saying, okay, you're in control. You're making the decision now as to what is the width of this element and nothing can happen to make that change. So even if, for example, this text keeps growing, let's say I'll just drag the text box. You see, it doesn't really affect anything. The width is already set. 
Let's set the height to fill container. Now I'm just gonna hover over it for a second and see what happens in the canvas. Do you see those red arrows going up and down? They are giving me an indication of what is going to happen. So when I click on fill, the element inside fills up as much space as it can within its container. So within this big auto layout, right? Now, if this big auto layout had some horizontal padding, let's say it had 50, you'll see that that has now shrunk down because it says, okay, I can't go all the way up because there's some padding here and I need to respect the rules, but it's gonna go up as much as it can. Let's do the opposite for the yellow one. So for the height, I'm gonna set it to fixed height. And I'll show you again an example, even if this text box keeps growing, you see that the height of the element isn't gonna change because I told it what it is. And I'm gonna set the width to fill. Gonna pause for a second again for dramatic effect. What do you think is gonna happen to the other elements, right? The arrows, the red arrows are indicating as if it's gonna just go all the way outside, but do we think that's what's gonna happen? I don't know. Now, if we click on fill container, you see that not exactly, right? We need to remember there are rules that are set by the auto layout and the elements inside have to follow them. So we told it, take up as much space as you can, but also remember, let's select this auto layout and see, there has to be 30 pixels of gap between you and the other elements. And also you can't just squish them, you can't kill your siblings, right? So. This guy filled up as much space as it could while respecting 30 pixels, the width of this one, 30 pixels, the width of this one. If we had some padding on either side, you'll see that that yellow one gets squished even more because it's just taking up as much space as it can. So it's super, super dynamic. Now let's use fill for both the width and the height for the green one. Now with the height, we know it's gonna happen, right? Same as orange, it's gonna fill up the space as much as it can. What is going to happen when we use fill width. Stop and think for a second. Is the hug contents one gonna be affected? Is the fixed width one gonna be affected? Is the other fill width gonna be affected? Let's see. So when I click on fill container, oop, only one of them was affected. That is because this yellow one is the only other one that's dynamic, right? This one is fixed by me. Figma's like, I'm not getting involved with this. You told me to be one, two, four. I'm gonna be one, two, four. Red doesn't really care about what's happening outside. All it cares about is what's inside of it and yellow is the only one that's filling as much space as it can. So it's saying, okay, someone else needs some space, I'll shrink as well. And you'll even notice that both of these are the exact same width because they are both filling up as much space as they can in the same kind of container. Now let's see what happens when I kind of move this auto layout around. So I'll zoom out a bit and show you. If I make it shorter, let's see who's affected. The fill heights, right? Red doesn't care, all it cares about is what's happening inside. Yellow, I told it what the height is, it's not gonna change that ever. And same's gonna happen if I change the width, right? You see now green and yellow are affected. Orange and red, really do not care. So I hope that made sense. I know that it can be a bit daunting when you see it for the first time, but when you're using auto layouts, especially if you're nesting multiple ones, you really need to be aware of these. And it's a lot of like trial and error. Just try and see what works for you when you're actually using it. Now, two more advanced things I wanna show you when it comes to auto layout. Up till now, we've been speaking a lot about the fact that there is a rule when it comes to the auto layout and all of the elements inside have to follow that rule. But there are a few ways to sort of break the rules or sort of just, you know, play around with them and create almost rules within rules. So I have these animals here and each of these animals is an auto layout. It's you can see in the layers panel, this one's just an auto layout and inside of it, there is a vector or a group, which is just the, the kind of the animal itself. And I also have this crown, it's just a frame. So I'll select all of my animals and put them into an auto layout using Shift A. Now, because it's a wrap auto layout, you'll notice that I can change the gap on both kind of the axes, both on the horizontal and on the vertical if I wanted to. But I think I'll keep both of them on 30. Now, let's say I want to crown one of these animals and I want to put a crown on kind of like the top right of the square that it's in. Which animal should I crown? I think I'm gonna crown the pig. So I'll take the crown and I'll try and just put it there. Oh, okay, that didn't work. I'll try and put it there. Ooh, it's not, hmm. Okay, it's not really working, is it? So the reason it's not working is because there is a rule, right? So let's see how you can ignore that rule. I'm gonna put my crown into the same box as the pig. If you're trying to put something in and everything just keeps moving, hold down command, that lets you almost deep dive into the auto layout. Now, 
in the position section of the design panel, there's going to be this button here that's called ignore auto layout. And when I click on it, you'll see that automatically, suddenly the X and the Y are not gray anymore. So if it's in an auto layout, the X and Y are gray because I'm not deciding where things are, Figma is. But if I ignore it, I can decide where it is. You'll also see in the layers panel that now this element has these sort of like corners around it to let me know that it's ignoring the auto layout. And now I can move it. So I can use alignment tools, put it to the top, to the right, maybe move it a bit more using my arrow keys. Lovely. Now, when you use ignore auto layout, it's really important to know which auto layout to put the crown in. So for example, I had this big auto layout, right? The wrap one. And then I had the pig who's also an auto layout because the crown needs to move. If the pig moves, I put it inside of that. So right, if I use my arrows to move the pig around, that crown needs to stay with him. So that's why I put it inside of the pig auto layout and not inside of the big auto layout. Hope that makes sense. One really important thing to note with ignore auto layout, I sometimes see people use this loads. So they'll have an auto layout and like th three elements inside are ignoring their auto layout. If there isn't a rule to follow, don't use auto layout, right? If everything is ignoring it, then why is it even in an auto layout to begin with? Sometimes you really need it for one or two things, but don't overuse it is what I'm trying to say. Now my animals are in a wrap auto layout and right now it's kind of dynamic, but it's not really dynamic. So if this becomes smaller, it is responsive in a way that it makes them drop down, but I still have this ugly bit of empty space. Right? What if I want my animals to spread out if they have the space, a bit like a gallery wall, so they are responsive in that way. So we can do that using minimum width. So let's see how we can do that. I'll make my auto layout just big enough for everyone right now. And then I'll select all the elements inside the auto layout. So I'm selecting all of the animals. Right now, their width is set to fixed, but let's change it to fill, right? I want them to fill up as much space as they can. So when it does become, you know, that one of them moves down, the rest of them still have, like, they kind of grow. So if I click that, ooh, not really what we wanted, is it? So let me take you back to a second. Remember when I said, what you need to remember about wrap is that it's a horizontal layout until it has no more space to be horizontal. So that's what's happening. Figma's saying, oh, you, you want me to take up as much space as I can? Cool, I'll do that. I'm just gonna take up a really small amount of space and then I'll fit in one row. But we really don't want that, do we? So I'm gonna command Z. What I wanna do is tell it, take up as much space as you can, but never go smaller than one, two, two, right? Because this is kind of the minimum size I would want them to be. So if I go to the width and use this drop down, I can add a minimum width. And I'm gonna tell them that the min width is actually one, two, two, right? So grow as much as you want, but never be smaller than 122. Now that I've set my minimum width, I'm going to make sure that I'm selecting all the animals and set them to fill container. So they're now gonna take up as much space as they can, but when they start shrinking, they will never be smaller than one, two, two. I'll select my auto layout and let's start making it smaller. Oop. See what happened? Already we're seeing results, right? Now, a few of them dropped down to a new row, but the rest of them also took up more space. So now we're being dynamic. And if I just grow, ooh, you see what happened? When I made it grow, you see those red lines? It's almost alerting me. We are now at our minimum width, yeah? If I keep growing, you see they'll become nice and wide. And if I keep going, you see that for a split second, I had those red lines before it jumped down. And that just makes it super, super dynamic and really, kind of exciting and makes a really responsive space and things like this can happen, right? I wouldn't have necessarily expected that to happen when I made it bigger, but Figma is just saying, okay, I've got you. I'm gonna reshuffle them to, to make it all make sense. This is just one example of how you can use that minimum function, but you can use minimum or maximum for width and height and you can use them interchangeably. And sometimes that's just what you need to make things happen. I would say with auto layout in general, it's a lot of trial and error and just figuring out what exactly works for you, especially because usually you'll be nesting multiple auto layouts inside of each other. I hope you enjoyed. I hope that makes sense and you're not scared to use auto layout anymore. Please like and subscribe, leave a comment below. Let me know what else you want to see. See you at the next one.